is not our home. This world is not our purpose. We're travelers. We're only visitors. We're only here for a short time. And then we return to our home. And fourth, we warn ourselves that we're returning to our maker. Islam saves us from ourselves. What does that mean? That means if we're going the wrong way, Islam nudges us. Ah, come back here. Islam saves us from ourselves. That means if I have a wrong idea, Islam, the guidance from Islam sent by God, will help correct that idea. Islam is a gift. Imagine someone going the wrong way, about to get in a car accident, no one, no one gives him advice. Imagine someone about to fall, and no one helps him up. Someone's going to slip, no one saves him. Someone's going to hurt themselves, no one, no one helps. Islam is our helper, Islam is our aid, Islam is our guide. Through our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam saves us from ourselves. We need Islam. Now in this world, we want comfort. We want comfort. We want comfortable shoes. If we don't like our shoes, we exchange them. We want comfortable socks. <laughs> we want comfortable shirts, comfortable jackets. We want a comfortable car, comfortable pillow, comfortable bed. You know, we like a comfortable home. You know, right? We want comfort. We want a comfortable job, right? We want a comfortable job, a comfortable career. We want a comfortable marriage, comfortable relationships. We want comfort. How do we get comfort in the next life? Do you want comfort there? Do you want to be comfortable there? There's also a way to be comfortable there. And I'm going to share seven ways and choose one of them and how you can get comfort on the Day of Judgment. Because sometimes people go to the Day of Judgment and they're like, oh shoot, Ya Allah, send me back. Send me back, please. I promise, send me back. After they die, after their soul leaves them. Send me back, I promise I'll start to pray. Send me back, I promise I'll start to be good to my mom. Send me back, please. I'll start to obey my dad. Send me back, please. I'll stop listening to that junk. Please send me back. Give me one more chance. Give me one more opportunity. The chance is over. But you have a chance every day. Here, you have a chance right now, today. And it's amazing that you're here sitting in this mosque. And that's not a small thing. Shaitan is, is unhappy that you're here. Satan is real. The devil is real. He's unhappy that you're here. He's, and now that you're here, he always wants to make you lose a little bit. If he, it's the best if you don't come to the mosque at all. Right? Oh, he came to the mosque. Okay, maybe then if he goes to the mosque, then maybe he can go without wudu. Oh, no, you have wudu. Oh, okay, then maybe he, he went to the mosque and he has wudu. You know what? Then maybe I can get him to just be like, What's up with this imam? He doesn't know what it is. I want to go back to work. I want to go back to school. I want to go back home. When is this going to finish? It's 3.52. <laughs> this carpet looks interesting. Look at this. It looks like a little lion. See? So he always wants to lessen it. So right now he's whispering. I hope the people, guy next to me is paying attention. He really needs this. But me? No, I'm already good. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm on my way to heaven. Nothing wrong with me. I don't need to fix anything. Everyone else needs to change. Accept me for who I am. <laughs> now we want to always improve ourselves. We want to be the best Ahmed, the best Zaid, the best Umar. Always improve ourselves. Right? And so we have a chance every day, alhamdulillah, that we're here. And so we want comfort. You want to be comfortable on the day of judgment? On the Day of Judgment, some people are going to be very uncomfortable. The Day of Judgment's real. The Day of Judgment is real. The angels are real. 
The devil is real. The next life is real, more real than this life. This life is all delusion. It hypnotizes us. So there's seven ways to get comfort on that day. Seven ways. And here they are. And these are when people are on the day of judgment and it's so, so, so uncomfortable. There's some people that are going to be chilling, cool in the shade. In the shade. Very cozy. Very comfy. And others are going to be fretting and sweating swimming in their own sweat, trembling, nervous. And then there's seven types of people chilling in the shade. Who are these seven? I want to be one of them. Please, I want to be from them. How can I be from them? You want to be comfortable here? You want to be comfortable there? It's the same you. And you, this is your life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your life. No matter how much your mom loves you, no matter how much your dad loves you, they can't force you into heaven. They can force you sometimes to Saturday school, to Sunday school. They can force you sometimes to the masjid, to the mosque. They can force you sometimes to the halaqa. But they can't force you into paradise. This is you. This is your life. Which way are you going? And Islam is here to nudge me back on that right way. So let's get comfortable Let's get comfortable in the next life. And so the first way is when you are in a place when you're leading something that you're fair. You're fair. You're fair to the people that you're leading. Maybe you're an older brother. Maybe you're a father. Maybe you're a masjid board member. Maybe you're leading something. Maybe you're a basketball team captain. Are you fair? Right? The next way is a beautiful way. This is a really beautiful way. A young person who grows up obedient to God. Now listen to the word. Obedient, worshiping God. Now sometimes you don't feel it. My mom wants me to pray dhuhr. I prayed. My, my dad wants, I have to, I'm fasting in Ramadan. I fast. My dad wants me to go to this dhikr, to this majlis and do dhikr. I'm not feeling it, but you do it anyways. And that doing it anyways is a beautiful thing. Because it shows that you are in a state of submission. You will remain obedient. You remain worshiping. Even though I'm not feeling it, I still believe it. I'm still going to do it. And that's a sign of love. The lover to the beloved is obedient. So even though I don't understand sometimes, even though sometimes I don't feel it, sometimes I don't want to do it, I do it anyways as a sign of my love, right? So we grow up, and it's pretty simple. The formula is really not complicated. Fast Ramadan, if you have $1,000 saved in the future, give 25 to charity, <laughs> right? 10,000, give 250, you know? Pray five times a day. It only takes like 10, 15 minutes to pray the five prayers. Be nice, obey your parents, be nice to people. It's pretty simple, you know? That's it. So you don't be like that person, send me back. Please, give me another chance. Please, give me another chance. So when we meet Allah, our maker, we're smiling, not frowning, inshallah. So we said the first way is to be fair. The second way is a young person obedient. And choose, I want to be that young person, obedient. The third type of person is someone whose heart is attached to the masjid, to the house of God. Oh, I love coming to the house of God to just turn off the world, to just come here for a moment and come to the house of Allah, a house of peace, a beautiful place whose heart is connected to the house of, whose heart is connected to the house of Allah. The fourth type of person is two buddies who love each other for the sake of God. Can you do that? Two buddies who love each other for the sake of Allah. They remind each other, hey, I want to take you to heaven. And the definition of a friend is not necessarily someone you can laugh with or hang out with or play basketball with. The definition of a friend is someone who's taking me to heaven <laughs> because they love me more than anyone else. <laughs> They're taking me to heaven, to paradise. That's the definition of a friend. 
right? So two, two people, two buddies who love each other for the sake of God, they get together and make for the sake of God, they leave each other for the sake of God. And that's kind of a fun one. You can play basketball, and it gets you closer to that comfort on the Day of Judgment. You can play basketball. You can get together and eat ice cream with your two brothers, and you do it in a halal way. You say, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, delicious ice cream. And all of a sudden, you're two buddies. Now, all of a sudden, you're getting comfort on the next day. And that's an easy one. That's the fourth way. We'll do the other three in the next khutbah. Seek forgiveness from God. He forgives all sins. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al Mursaleen. If you want comfort in this life, then you probably want comfort in the next life. And there's seven ways to get comfort and shade on a day that there's no shade except Allah's shade. And so the fifth way to get shade on the day of judgment, to be comfortable, the fifth way is to refuse. Listen to this. When a haram girlfriend or haram boyfriend comes and says, hey, can I get your number? Hey, can I hang out? Hey, you want to go do this or that? You say, you refuse. And you say, I fear God. Nope, that's not for me. That's not my way. I'm Muslim. I'm not like you, you're not like me. I'm not like you, you're not like me. You got your way, I got mine. Isn't that what Qul Ya Kafirun means? You probably learned it when you were five years old. I'm not like you, you're not like me. I'm not like you, you're not like me. You have your way, I have my way. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not going to look at that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not interested. I fear, I fear Allah. That's the, that's the fifth way. The sixth way is an easy way. You can do it today before you leave this masjid. It's a sadaqah that you give with your right hand that your left hand doesn't know what you gave. Yani you give it in secret. You give it in, 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 you give it in secret. You give it privately. Maybe you give an amount and you don't even know what it is. And so you give a sadaqah today. And there's so much need for sadaqah. Right? And the benefits of sadaqah are abundant. You can do that today. And the seventh way to get comfort in the next life is when you're alone, you remember Allah and a tear falls from your eye. You're alone, you remember Allah, a tear falls from your eye. Let's prepare for our true home, our prepare for our true des destination. We're all visitors here. We're only going to be here a few days. We're only going to be here a few months. We're all, we're all, the shortest place you're going to live is probably San Ramon or Danville or Livermore. Even if you live there 20, 30 years, if those square feet is the shortest place you're going to live. So let's prepare for our true destination and not be deluded by the devil, distracted by the dunya. Let's prepare. People are leaving this world all the time. Just last week, there was a tragedy, a young 22-year-old. He was on his way to his wedding in four days. He was on his way to his wedding. And his wedding, the day of his wedding became the day of his funeral. I know his father. I know his uncles. The day of his wedding became the day of his funeral. It was a Friday, I think two weeks ago. It was a Friday. He was engaged. He had his kitab, his nikah done. Four days before his wedding, he talked to his fiance, and he told her, he told her, today's Friday, and I know you're busy preparing for the wedding in four days. So guess what I did? I read the chapter kahf in the Quran twice. Once for you and once for me. He read it twice on the day that he passed away. And then he was driving. The car malfunctioned. May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah have mercy on him and be gentle with his family and his parents. And so the day of his wedding became the day of his azat. 
And so they were giving condolences. The family was flying in, the grandparents were flying in, the uncles were flying in. Instead of flying in to attend his wedding, they flew in to attend his funeral. All of us are on this path. We're here a few days. And so if you have something, some relationship that you need to fix, some habit you need to change, some prayer you need to begin, you haven't, if, you're, if, you, if you've been a little, uh, if you've been a little, sassy with your mom tell your mom i love you i'm sorry if you've been a little heavy with your dad give him a hug say baba i love you if you've been a little difficult with your wife or your husband go back and say sorry let's take care of each other let's be partners let's make each other let's take care of each other if you if you if your your prayer is a little weak make that your commitment say yeah Allah, i'm gonna pray and keep working at it because Allah loves those who repent. Even if they're, <laughs> it's amazing. One of the seven people Allah says that He loves in the Quran, at Tawabin, those who repent, those who say, so, say sorry after they make a mistake. <laughs> right? And so even though they're making mistakes and they keep repenting, so let's be one of those people that are always, repent, always turning to Allah. Ya Allah, I'm going to continue to try until the day I die. I'm going to continue to try until the, day, until the day I die. We're all going to leave this world. We're not going to take with us anything from this world except our hearts, except our deeds. And if you're satiated with your spiritual state, then that's the height of foolishness. If you are satiated with your spiritual state, it's the height of foolishness. We can always enhance, improve. And so we always want to continue to say, let me be better. Shaitan never tells you, oh, you have enough money. <laughs> but he tells you, oh, you have enough religion. <laughs> he, said, he tells you, you, know, you don't have enough money. You don't have enough money. Go work for more. Your house is not big enough. Your car is not new enough. Your this is not this enough. But your religion, oh, you're good enough. You're good. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Just chill, man. Chill. So we always want to do the opposite. We have enough. Look at those who have less than us money. Alhamdulillah. Look how blessed we are. Look at we're all, all of us, we're all immersed in blessings. All of us, if we just look the right way. If we look the right way, we're all swimming in blessings. <laughs> Amazing. Alhamdulillah. Right? And then we look at those who are doing more beautiful, spiritual ac actions and states and get inspired to do more, inshallah, so that we can all be reunited in paradise, inshallah. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Oh Allah, we ask you for the good of this world, the good of the next world, and to protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. Oh Allah, don't let us leave this world regretful. Don't let us be one of those people that say, send me back one more time, send me back. Send me back, I promise to be better. Send me back, I promise to stop that. I promise to stop this. Send me back. Let us not be one of those people, Ya Allah. Let us be one of those people that when we reunite with you, it's, it's a celebration. It's an illumination. It's a victory. It's a happiness, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to let us have comfort in this life and comfort in the next life. We ask you to shade us on the day of no shade except your shade. Ya Allah, we ask you to give us the strength to be, to honor our mothers, the strength to honor our fathers, the strength to forgive those who harm us, the strength to forgive those who harm us, the strength to be good to those who are not good to us, the strength to be generous to those who are greedy to us, the strength to connect with people who push us away. For you, Ya Allah, because we live for you, we die for you, we breathe for you not for ourselves. Ya Allah, help Islam, help Islam and our dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nudge us gently in the right direction. When we deviate, when we forget, when we fail, when we're angry, when we're jealous, when we're envious, Ya Allah, bring us back gently, Ya Allah. Bring us back gently, Ya Allah. Let us win this game, Ya Allah. Let us be from the winners, not the losers, Ya Allah. Not the losers, Ya Allah. I mean, Ya Allah, let, uh, let, us, let us score the true baskets of life. The true baskets of life. Honoring our parents and our mothers. Taking care of our neighbors. Ya Allah, let us use these ears that you own. We don't own them in a way that obeys you. Let us use these eyes that you own.